Hello, and thank you for joining me today. We're going to be talking about a subject entitled, It's Temporary at Best, So Get Serious. I want us to talk about the world that we live in right now. You know, it's fast-paced, it's hectic, and sometimes even ugly. But there is a flip side of that, and that's the side that God has given us if we will choose Him today. But first, we must understand that our life as we know it here on this earth is very temporary. In fact, James 4, 13 through 14 says, Come now, you who say, Today we will go into such and such city and spend a year there. Buy and sell and make a profit. Verse 14, Whereas you know not what shall happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a short time and then vanishes away. You know, we live in this body, and James says it's like our life is like a vapor. It's here, and then it's not here. And so I want us to talk today about what we do in that short time that we are given here on this earth in this temporary body. In 1 Peter Chapter 1, verses 24 through 25. Peter says, Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass, the grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. There's only one thing that is not temporary, and that's the word of the Lord. But he said that the grass withers. So he, he compared our life, the span of time, like a blade of grass. And all the glory that we might attain, maybe titles and honors, money, degrees, anything that we call value, he compared it to a little flower on the grass. And when, one is, when the blade of grass is gone, so is the flower the honor, the degrees, everything is temporary on this earth except the Word of God. No matter how much we strive to do something, we can't get past the fact that there is an end to this life. And you say, but Evangelist D, that's hard. I've got plans for my life. I've got dreams. I've got hopes. I've got things yet to accomplish. Well, that's great, but you have seen nothing until you understand the plans that God has for your life. It's found in Jeremiah 29, 11. I don't have time to take the lesson in that direction today, but you look it up. God has plans for you today in Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going to stay with us today on the part of that vapor that is so short and how we fill it in. And I want to really concentrate on those who have been hurt while on this lifetime. They, somebody has hurt them. They don't understand why somebody did it to them, whether it was done intentionally or unintentionally. It's a hurt. And they, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, Therefore, laying aside all malice, now, malice means spite or revenge. All deceit, which means cheating, trickery, fraud, pretense, fakeness, hypocrisy, pretending that you're something when you're not, and envy, jealousy, and bitterness. And we're going to talk on bitterness today. And evil speaking, which is slander. Verse 2. As newborn babes desire, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Verse 3, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. In other words, if in fact you're a Christian and you've been hurt, then we're going to talk to you today. Many times Christians are hurt by friends, even the church. But what do we do with it when we're hurt? 
Peter certainly covered a large area. He covered the hypocrisy, the envy, the jealousy, the slander. He, at some point, probably has hit most of us. But what do we do with it? I'm teaching this lesson today like Peter did. I'm teaching it to the Christians, remember. Now, he puts out a big warning to us, and I want to call it a guilt. If you experience a guilt of bitterness, a guilt in your life over the fact that you are bitter, praise God for that guilt, because guilt is something God allows you to feel when you're out of good standing with Him. Because you see, bitterness does not come, nor is it approved by God. So if you're feeling that, that sense of guilt within you, stay with me today. We're going to get through this together. My question to you, do you really want to stand before God Almighty and explain to God why you wouldn't and couldn't forgive someone why you wouldn't and couldn't forgive someone. Do you want to stand in heaven one day and explain that to God? I'm sure he'd like to hear the answer. Remember God, he's the one who sent his son for us to die on the cross for you and for me to take our place so that we didn't have to. We were the ones that were wrong, but he took it for us. John 3, 17, for God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God is not a condemning God. He is a forgiving God, and he wants to pull us out of any unrighteousness, including us today. I want you to look at um, a legacy. In fact, remember I said, would you want to stand before God and tell God why you will not and cannot forgive someone? I challenge you today to say it out loud to him as though you were truly standing in his presence because you are. He hears it all. He knows it all already. Tell him why you won't forgive them. Say it out loud. And I promise you, if you do it and you love the Lord, he will begin to let you hear it like he heard it. And before long, you're going to begin to cry out, God, what have I done? Oh, my God, what have I done? Why? What have I done, God? Well, I'm going to be very hard and tell you some of the things that you have done to this point. Because God gave me this message to bring today for those who are listening. There is someone out there that needs to hear this today. What have I done, God? One thing that you have done is you have built a legacy behind you. You've left a legacy of bitterness. You've taught others that this is the way you deal with it when you're hurt. So they too will follow in your footsteps one day. Now, what if you were the one that accidentally hurt them? And you said, please forgive me. And they said, no. You would have to understand that's the way they were taught by us. We are the ones that do the teaching. You know, we will be held accountable for our influences of others. We will be. So once again, Peter says, you know, if you've stumbled, if you've made a mistake, he gives us an answer on what to do. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Now, in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, there's a verse that says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, there's a reason that God put that verse smack in the middle of the Lord's Prayer. 
Because honestly, if you've got unforgiveness, you're not going to go any further down the line. Because God can't honor your prayer as long as you're holding something against someone else. He wants you to forgive as he forgave. And so we could even flip that and say, as we forgive our debtors, the Lord will forgive us our debts. You see how that reverses? It's the same. The time's coming to an end, people. God's time is short. Our life is but a vapor. We're here for a very short time. Even the grass that withers, that had a flower, no matter the glory, no matter their honor, no matter the titles, is coming to an end. Are you being serious about your relationship with God Almighty? Are you being serious about allowing the Holy Spirit to, to work within your spirit? Are you allowing Him to, to put that, that feeling in you of this isn't right? You know this isn't going the way the Word of God tells you to do it. You must forgive. But it's one thing to say, I forgive them. That doesn't count. It's in here because the word says, be serious and watchful in your prayers and above all things, fervent love for one another. Hmm. So you're telling me that saying, I forgive them, doesn't count. Not really. I mean, it might be a start, but it's not really it. You see, God knows your heart. Ask him to put a fervent love in your heart for that person. Ask him not only to not hold them accountable in heaven or on earth for their fault against you, but to clean out all that ugly and bitterness and then say, God, forgive me for all the influence that I've had upon family, friends, grandchildren, whoever. Forgive me, Father, and give me love for that person. I want to walk this Christian walk, this vapor of time, as best I know how, Father, in your presence, exemplifying exactly what you want me to be. Now, if that's you today, if you're in the middle of the Lord's Prayer and you realize there's an as there, as I forgive others, then say, Father, right now, I give them to you. Give me grace today to accept your forgiveness for myself and for them. And Father, I'll give you all praise and all glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed Fresh Manna for today with Evangelist Dee Levins. For more teaching from Dee, read Echoes from God, a Christian study book for growing deep and strong in the faith. Connect with Dee and purchase her book at dlevins.com.